firearm storage in the vehicle. Never get complacent. Make sure if you're going to the range or hunting or taking your firearms to the dealer, never ever get complacent. Make sure that your firearms are action broken or the bolt removed while transporting. Make sure if you have ammunition, it is in its original packaging or better and is separate to the firearm. For example, in another locked part of the car, in the glove box and the firearm in the back, or in another locked con container, which I will show you in this video. The firearm must be in a container, a gun bag or a box. It must be in a container or receptacle, part of the Weapons Act. The vehicle must be locked at all times so it's inaccessible to unauthorised access. Make sure that you never leave a firearm with an unauthorised person at any time. The firearm must always be inaccessible to unauthorised people. A break action shotgun could be stored in its gun bag just like this. Putting the trigger lock in makes the firearm inoperable which breaks the action. As you can see in a gun bag it would be hard to break the action and leave it broken. At least this way if you did break the action and it came back together again the trigger lock prevents it from being used. With the lever action rifle see how that lock the cable with the padlock around the lever makes that inoperable which makes the firearm action broken as it can't be used. With the bolt action rifle obviously you can, you can pull the bolt out or use a trigger lock and you can even put a safety flag in as well to show that the firearm is clear and empty. The bolt you could just literally put that in your gun bag in its separate little pouch and put the rifle in like that. That would be legal for storage in the vehicle. With a pump action or a straight pull shotgun the action is broken like that, it's open and I've even put a trigger lock in as well as an extra precaution. With the pistol you could have the action broken but you can also get locks like this that is an extra prevention if you wish to use it for transporting your firearm in the vehicle. Under the Weapons Act a firearm must be stored in a container or a receptacle a gun bag covers a container. The firearm are now in their bags ready for transportation in the road. The bolt action rifle which is in the black bag I have put the bolt in the little zip pouch here which is now separate to the firearm which also makes that action broken or the bolt removed. The handgun is in its hard case and the ammunition is in its container locked up ready for transportation. Ammunition must be stored separate to the firearms. You could put it in a container just like this, put the padlock through it, and that makes it inaccessible to unauthorised access, which also makes it separate from the firearms, and you could store them together in the boot of the vehicle or on the back seat under a blanket out of sight. In the Weapons Act, it says in a locked boot or out of sight in a locked vehicle. So in the boot, this would be legal, literally with the boot down like that and closed. But I recommend still putting a blanket over it like that, because you could be in a servo or you could be in a shopping center, quickly getting out your wife's handbag or something out of the boot and an undesirable person sees the firearms and then breaks into your car. Always best to hide the fact that you've got firearms in your car. Keep them out of sight at all times. If you don't have a boot on your vehicle, you can store your firearms on the back seat, just like this. Ammunition's down the bottom here, and the firearms are on the back seat in their containers. But they must be out of sight because they're not in a locked boot. So if you put a blanket over the top like that, once the door is shut, someone looks through, they can't see what's inside there, they can't see there's a firearm. They must always be out of sight. So in a locked vehicle, out of sight, they could be behind the seat, on the seat like that, in the back of the station wagon part, or in the boot. 
If they're on the outside of a vehicle, they must be stored in a locked metal container. It must be locked and securely attached to the vehicle. The metal container on the outside of a vehicle, like as for example on the back of a ute, it would need to have no stickers or branding on the box to show that there is a firearm in there. No brands, no stickers. It must be just a plain metal box securely attached to the vehicle. Only if it's on the outside of a vehicle. Another important thing that you'll need to remember when you do your test, there'll be a question that comes up in the course saying about leaving an unauthorised person in a vehicle with a firearm. What that means is, for example, I could be driving to the service station, I have my wife in the car, or a friend that's an unlicensed person. Now with the firearms in the back seat here, like they are, for five minutes if I just ran into the servo and left them in the car with the engine running and the aircon on, I've just broken the law because I've left a firearm with an unauthorised person. So technically I'd need to get them to go in and pay for the fuel or get them out of the car, lock the vehicle and go in and pay for the fuel for myself. Just remember, at no time can you ever leave a firearm with an unauthorised person. They must have a licence at all times for the category of firearm that you have with you. Thank you for watching. I hope you now understand how to transport your firearms safely and legally in the vehicle. I'll catch you on my course and we'll go through it in more detail on the course. Thank you.